Hello, welcome, this is Blockchain Bloom, the Blockchain Educator. I'm Atala Pinke, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about that in yesterday, uh, the stock market fell. However, Bitcoin stayed above 10,000. And actually, this is a very positive thing. Let's discuss that. The second news will be that uh, the DeFi bubble popped in a way that uh, many quality DeFi projects are down 50% in the last couple of weeks. So what's happening with DeFi? What's the future of it? And uh, the third news will be about Venezuela, where the government actually blocked access to two exchanges. One is Coinbase and another one is America Dollar. And, you know, this is really, really bad for the people who live in Venezuela, uh, how to use these exchanges. To use the exchange itself was to survive because their currency is so bad and now the government blocked it. Okay, so these will be the three topics in today's video. And if you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, but you're interested in blockchain and cryptocurrency, you would like to stay up to date. You would like to get a fresh new video with the hottest news every weekday from Monday to Friday, then you should subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get the videos as soon as they out because I put these videos, as I said, on this YouTube channel every weekday, so from Monday to Friday. And uh, furthermore, we have a totally free course available for you to download. The link is right under the video, and it's all about how to start to invest in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies with a lot of, lot of uh, important and valuable information, safety steps, what you must do before you invest in any crypto, prepare yourself for the bull market, the link is uh, down here. And now let's jump into the market. Let's see how things look like. Okay, so Bitcoin, as I said, and still above 10,000, $10,198, which is about a 1% decrease in the last 24 hours. Ethereum is still staying around this 340 level for a while now. It's a minus 2% uh, decrease. <clears throat> The gainers, uh, Binance Coin went up 4%, Engine Coin went up 2%, Ontology went up uh, 1%, so not really big moves upwards. However, downwards, Hyperion 28% minus, Sushi Swap is falling 16%, and DeFi Money, uh, DFI, it's uh, falling also 11%. <coughs> and now let's talk about the first news, which is all about that, you know, I told you yesterday in the video that uh, we'll see what's happening with the stock market. But uh, because Bitcoin is correlated with the stock market in the short term, uh, when we usually uh, check out the historical data, then I predicted if stock market will open and the thing's looking bearish and it goes down, then probably even Bitcoin can go towards 9,500. However, surprise, surprise, Bitcoin stayed above 10,000. And this is actually a very good thing, to be honest with you. <clears throat> we can see that it's not necessarily, if the stock goes down, then uh, Bitcoin uh, will go down immediately. Look, in stock, uh, we can see that uh, Nasdaq, actually, in the last uh, three days, it's in 10% uh, minus. We have S&P 500 in the last three days, 7% down. We have uh, Dow Jones, uh, last three days, 5.5% down. Yesterday, Tesla was falling 21%. But actually, you know, they said that the, the, the tech sector is the one which is pushing the things down. But it wasn't the tech sector. It was, you know... Um, Seven out of uh, seven of the indexes uh, of the ten biggest losers yesterday were en energy stock, basically. But the thing is that the stock market is still going down. However, but this is just my opinion. I believe that the Fed will do something because the election is coming, and for you know for Trump and for the US for, for for everything it's very very important to keep people smiling keep the level high so even now it's falling i think they will do everything to turn it back and push it upwards i don't know what we have in after the election because then they can more relax maybe there you know really this crash will come but until the election, 
I'm actually positive that they won't let the stock fall. Maybe now this is happening, there is some correction, but it should turn back. We are just uh, around beginning, uh, mid of September, and uh, you know the election is November, so they don't have to hold on for a long time. But in the last, let's say, two months, um, they should uh, do something to push everything back. And I think if they push it somehow back, turn it back, and then the stock will go up, that will have a positive impact on crypto and Bitcoin. So this uh, what I think. And uh, no, this is not the one. Uh, actually, yeah, here you can see uh, how Bitcoin performed uh, in the last uh, couple of days. You know, it was basically staying here. This is the level, the 10,000 level. And, uh, you know, it went under it, but just for a short period of time, bang, and pump back. And it's uh, spent the most of the time, even since it entered just under 10,000, the most of the time it was above 10,000. And, uh, yeah, here's an article uh, uh, that uh, about uh, the Kraken report. And, uh, you know, uh, Kraken has predicted that September will bring uh, excessively negative returns uh, for Bitcoin. Historically, September is Bitcoin's worst performing month with an average in return of minus 7%. So what they say that now in, you know, the bull market is totally normal, that there are these pullbacks. And after a larger pullback, there should be then a, a bullish trend again. <coughs> So we see how it uh, will work out. Look, they also say here that 12 times in the past, Bitcoin uh, analyzed volatility bottomed between 15 and 30% before climbing. On average, the 140% and returning plus 196% over 94 days. As of the end of August, 38 days have passed since the volatility low of 23% set on July 24th, with volatility rising to 44% and pricing gaining plus 25%. Uh, so so history, uh, history indicates that we, have, uh, we may have ample room for higher volatility and gains in the month ahead. So they really positive uh, and bullish uh, a month ahead. We'll see how September will uh, perform because the beginning of September, it's uh, definitely negative, but maybe towards end of September and the month after it in October, it can actually uh, go up. So in long term, they actually bullish on Bitcoin. And the second news I wanted to discuss is that um, what's happening with DeFi. Because, you know, DeFi was the one, the area which actually was leading in the last couple of months. Uh, since, you know, late spring, DeFi actually started more and more DeFi projects, quality DeFi projects started to go up and they actually made beautiful gains, you know, uh, doubled, tripled and even more and more and more. And now what we can see here, that uh, it's a rough week for DeFi, because uh, with six assets dipping more than 50% per over the last seven days. And some people say, okay, that was DeFi, DeFi is over. We have to actually, in my opinion at least, separate two things in DeFi. We have this yield farming, hype, sushi, hot dog, and all these things. I think this is kind of dangerous. It's actually it's not even a good thing to say is that it's under the DeFi umbrella. So this is the bad part. But then we have on the other side, quality projects. And if you believe in DeFi uh, as an area and uh, also uh, believe in those projects, then for you, this period would be Black Friday the best time to shop. If you left out, if you haven't joined uh, those projects on time, when they started to go up, then now is the time to maybe uh, collect some of them. But what I wouldn't advise, if you for DeFi, then now you jump in all in. What you should do over the time, always buy a little bit here and there and here and there. So, Nobody knows where is the bottom, nobody knows where is the top, but in average, 
you're going to have a good average. And another thing what I wanted to say with these uh, coins, old coins, you shouldn't really have a more than 5% of your portfolio in one old coin because then you minimize the risk. So I just give you an example. For example, you have I mean, whatever, 30% or 40 in Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, maybe because Ethereum is the number one old coin and Bitcoin is the kind of safe haven. And then the rest, the 70-60%, uh, you spread it in good quality old coins, but not putting more than 5%. If you have 60%, you still have 12 old coins, but you can put less than 5, obviously, but I wouldn't put more than 5. It's not financial advice. This is the way how I'm thinking, because uh, then you cannot hurt yourself. Those people who have little savings, you know, and they say, Ooh, okay, now I'm excited, now I'm FOMO in, this is one project, it can actually go 100x, I'm all in. And just picked one or two projects, two small uh, old coins. They can be vanished anytime. So, and then the whole saving went uh, away. Or when they drop significantly, what's happening right now, people panicking and now taking out money before it's going more down. So if you in, First of all, you risk your money, what it doesn't matter if you lose it. Of course, it doesn't feel good, but it won't affect your life. That's what I'm meaning. And then when it's going down and you're already in and you believe it's a good project, it's a quality old coin, which will go up definitely, then you just hold, hodl, as they say in crypto terms, okay? You just simply not sell it and then it will return and then it will go even higher and higher. Always, you know, zoom out. People are really zoomed in. They're focusing on a couple of day trades, and then they scared what's happening now. If you zoom out, then you can see how uh, that coin is really performing, what kind of moves it has done uh, over the uh, time it's out. So that's, that's, that's my idea. And uh, yes, now, thanks to this, this, this yield farming and everything, this is, had, had made a bad reputation of DeFi uh, right now. But sooner or later, I hopefully it dies uh, off at least on the level what we have now, because this is just crazy. It's not a bad thing <clears throat> on its own, but how people use it, how they just simply not caring about projects, just being very greedy, that obviously is leading to something bad. And... Uh, the third news is all about uh, Venezuela and that the government has blocked access to uh, Mercadollar and Coinbase. And, um, you know, Coinbase is... Uh, <coughs> sorry. Coinbase is definitely um, one of the biggest crypto exchanges. And for Venezuela, it's actually really, really crucial to survive, to have access to Bitcoin, because their local currency has hyperinflated, and just protect their savings, they have to do something. But obviously, the government doesn't want you to hodl crypto; they want you to hodl the local uh, crypto. Sorry, the local uh, currency what they have, because that's what they can kind of control. But however, they're out of control right now. So what they just did, uh, they actually uh, blocked the uh, access. And um, however, here somebody says the crypto exchanges have been blocked in the past, said the director of uh, Venezuela Intelligence, uh, Andres, uh, okay, whatever, that's his name, in references uh, to ISPs blocking via a DNA's block. Until recently, all of them were lifted. That's kind of a positive thing. But however, just the fact that they just blocking, they have control over that, it's uh, really bad. So Venezuela is one of, uh, in the, one of the countries which are probably the worst situation when it comes now to uh, the financial, uh, from the financial point of view. But um, it can happen to any country uh, in a way that the government can block all these things. And, you know, 
this is just not really fair with the people. But of course, this is not what the people uh, who have the power care about. They just want to keep the power. They want to keep control. They want to put their hands on the whole thing. And uh, therefore, crypto is really not good for them in a way that they cannot really control Bitcoin. They can block these exchanges. They can uh, say that you're not allowed to do anything with uh, crypto, just like in Russia, uh, in Russia happening now. But um, if you move countries and you have crypto, then you actually can continue. You just have to go to the country where crypto trading is uh, allowed. And the majority in the countries crypto is allowed. So there are uh, fewer countries where this is actually forbidden. So this is a bit sad to Venezuela, but uh, yeah, they just kind of suffering right now over there. And this is really bad. Okay, guys, so that's it for today. If you like these kind of uh, news, uh, you know, you, you want to stay up to date, then subscribe to this YouTube channel. Every weekday, I'm giving you a brand new video all about the hottest and freshest crypto and blockchain news. If you like the video, then smash the like button. I highly appreciate it. And uh, download the free course, what we have right under here, uh, this YouTube video, there is the link. It's all about how to start to invest in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So prepare yourself for the bull market, make all the safety steps before you invest. And you get the guidelines in this course. So it's totally free, download it, what are you waiting for? And obviously, tomorrow I'm coming back with the freshest news in blockchain and crypto. We'll see. Will Bitcoin stay uh, above 10,000 as it's doing now? Hopefully, but you know, you never know. But uh, all about this in tomorrow's uh, video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.